first, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. This is Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. As always, we appreciate you joining us here for our live streaming show, which is from the Fox 12 Oregon newsroom every weekday starting around 1 p.m. And, of course, you can find us on YouTube as well or the Fox 12 Oregon website, kptv.com, or the Fox 12 Oregon app. So whatever platform it is that you discovered us, thanks. And if you're not watching live, thank you as well. Feel free to share these segments uh, wherever you find them. Right now, we are talking about an announcement regarding a mosquito that has been discovered in southern Oregon, in Jackson County in particular. And this is the first time this particular mosquito has been found in this state. And unfortunately, it is one that can carry some pretty serious diseases along with it. So we're going to discuss uh, all the what, where, how, why, everything associated with that right now. We've got Dr. Emilio DeBest joining us. And, and Dr., thank you very much for, for being here. Um, and, uh, it, you know, to walk through this, obviously, when you hear something about deadly mosquito or m disease carrying mosquito, it's nothing that, that uh, anybody gets excited about in a good way. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think learning about it is, is the best thing that we can do. So to start off, can you tell us, you know, what kind of mosquito is this and where did it come from? Yeah, it's a great question. It's a, what we call, we call it a new invasive mosquito, meaning a mosquito that we haven't seen in Oregon before. It's present throughout the south section of the United States. In 2013, it showed up in California, in the LA area. And since then, it's been making its way up the state. Um, in 2020, uh, the uh, Northern California County actually found the mosquito and has been collecting it and identifying it since 2020. So here we are, 2024, Jackson County finds um, what initially was a single mosquito about three weeks ago. And since then, we set up the, the traps that we actually need to actually collect this mosquito. And we found about 80 of them so far. So where there's one, there's obviously bound to be a lot more. <laughs> And looking at you know the the travel from the southern U.S. to California, then on the way up, what has been the cause of that? Was that the natural progression where it was going to go anyway, and we're just seeing the result of this, or is there some particular reason that we're seeing it all the way over here on the West Coast? Well, there's a lot of reasons why the mosquito is present here. Obviously, the biggest one is changes in weather. Climate change is a big deal, right? But people actually moving the mosquito through plants, through tires, through, you know, the mosquito getting into trailers, into their cars, and then making all the way up here. So multiple ways people move around a ton, people travel on their travel trailers, uh, tires come in with water, potentially mosquitoes in there. Um, so multiple possibilities. So that, I think that's interesting. A lot of it, though, being, you know, people who are the ones moving the mosquitoes around and bringing them in, just obviously not, not on purpose and, and aware of that, but the fact that it does happen. So they're here, they're here in, in Southern Oregon. Um, what are some of the key things to know about this particular kind of mosquito and why it could be so dangerous? Yeah, so as we talked before, um, this, this is a really beautiful mosquito to some of you may not be, but it is. It's black and white. Um, it bites during the day, not in the evening, not in the morning. Um, it actually flies a very short distance and it really loves humans. Uh, so this mosquito lives in your backyard, lives where there's water, there's in where there's any water present in your backyard, that's where the mosquito is going to be. And it's a very, what we call an aggressive biter. It really loves to bite. And with that, then, you know, we have a different mosquito that we've seen throughout the time here in Oregon. At least we have, you know, 20 years of really good information about mosquito, the species and the diversity of mosquitoes throughout the state. And um, this one is just very different. Uh, the, when you just said it loves humans, yeah, it loves to bite humans. That's not something that's that's very comforting. So, uh, and aggressive on top of that, and during the daytime. So all things that, especially during the daytime side of things, something that maybe you know you don't really think of mosquitoes necessarily always during the daytime, and in the standing water. So, 
So it's there, you know, in Southern Oregon. You said that there, I believe it's about 80 that you've found so far. I believe is what you said. And so clearly that means that there's a lot more. Is this something that people can, that, that the state or organizations can fight to maybe eradicate or stop the spread? Or is it one of those things where it's here and that's just something that we have to get used to now? Yeah, so Jackson County Vector Control has been doing an amazing job collecting these mosquitoes. We had to send them out for identification. We're doing gene testing to find out where it came from. There's a lot of things that are going on at this point. The reason why we're putting out the press release is to get cooperation from the community uh, because it really likes people, it likes backyards, it likes standing water. So to allow vector control to go into different communities, backyards, and look for potential sources. A lot of it is to minimize the number of mosquitoes in the area and hopefully eradicate them, eliminate them altogether. But, you know, we'll see what happens when we get there. For right now, is let's, you know, allow the community to participate, to let the vector control district, Jackson County kind of vector control district, go into their, their yards and, and find out a potential source of the mosquito and try to minimize that as much as possible until October. So really, yeah, letting letting people know that if vector control is out there, let them come onto your property and, and check things out. And you mentioned, and I want to get into a little bit more of the mosquito too, but you mentioned standing water being one of the biggest places, I'm, I'm sure, breeding grounds for these mosquitoes. So I would imagine that's something, whether it's a, a pool that's not being circulated or, you know, maybe some, what are some other examples of places where maybe people have standing water that don't even think about it? Yeah, water dishes where plants that are outside that have the, the, the little dishes at the bottom where they collect water, um, swimming pools that are not taken care of and sometimes turn green and then that's a perfect place for the mosquitoes to lay egg uh, or eggs. Um, so any any standing water and you just have to be kind of look around, look for areas that where standing water may be present. We got a couple of rains a couple of times in this last two weeks. That's water that really, if it finds the proper uh, niche, it would actually just sit there and create a, a perfect place for mosquitoes to lay their eggs. So all things to, to look out for there on your property. And going back to this particular mosquito, and um, could you say the name of it for me one more time? I wasn't quite sure how to pronounce it. So it's Aedes aegypti. Aedes aegypti. Aedes aegypti. And for this particular Aedes aegypti mosquito, what makes it so prone to carrying some of these diseases? And can we go through what some of those are for, so people are aware of it? Yeah, so this particular mosquito is very well known to carry dengue virus, which is uh, a disease that we're actually seeing in huge numbers in Central and South America. Puerto Rico, um, Brazil uh, carries Zika virus, which is the one that we saw probably about six, seven years ago. Um, and then chikungunya, which is another somewhat new 10 years old virus that we've seen coming, uh, you know, being uh, transmitted by this mosquito. This mosquito in Asia also carries yellow fever. A lot of people refer to the mosquito as a yellow fever mosquito. So a lot of people call it as the dengue mosquito. Um, it's just, it carries multiple uh, illnesses, a lot of viruses and uh, that can actually infect humans. So it's uh, so it's carrying those. Has there been any evidence of any of those diseases here in Oregon, or or is there any likelihood of it happening? Yeah, so we're very lucky that we get very few cases of dengue fever. For example, all those cases are people that have traveled overseas and then come back to Oregon and are diagnosed with uh, dengue. I think in terms of Zika, I've seen maybe a couple of cases over the last two years throughout the state. Uh, chikungunya is even less likely to be uh, a concern. So, you know, potentially dengue would be one that if somebody comes from overseas and they have dengue virus and they're bitten by this particular mosquito, this mosquito can pass it on to someone else. 
the potential for transmission is, again, is very, very small because it really takes a number of things to actually happen before that were to be the case. Uh, we don't have a lot of cases, maybe one case of dengue fever in the past in the Jackson County area, so extremely rare. Um, but it's just the knowledge of having that mosquito, having the com community participate in uh, eliminating, trying to eliminate the mosquito as much as possible is really the key message here. And if somebody were to see one of these mosquitoes that, you know, are somehow were able to identify it as being on their property, what's the best thing that they can do after they do notice that? Yeah, they can they can call their vector control agency. In, in this case, Jackson County Vector Control. They have a phone number on their website. They have a, a form that they can fill out so they can come out to your property. Um, they're actually, in the last, since yesterday, they've been going out door to door in a new area, to, you know, putting out information about this particular mosquito. So again, what we want to do is get community involved, try to eliminate as many sources as possible, and hopefully eradicate it or just eliminate it once for all. All right. Well, Doctor, thank you very much for joining us, you know, to, to share all of this information. Um, I know, you know, as you mentioned, it's a beautiful looking mosquito. It kind of grosses me out a little bit, but I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's what people should be aware of, though, and, and just know what's going on. And that's, that's because of you helping there to get the word out and letting everybody know about that. So, Doctor, I really appreciate you joining us here on Fox 12 now. Thank you so much. And for everybody who's watching, again, we are live. We're going to take a break. Uh, we're going to sign off here in just a minute. I want to let you know that coming up at 2 p.m., we have the Fox 12 Weather Podcast video edition. So uh, if you're watching live, we've got some pretty nice weather right now. Is it going to last? What does that mean? What's happening with all of that? We've got uh, meteorologists who will explain all that to you. I am not the expert in that. That's why you want to tune in to the Fox 12 Weather Podcast video edition at 2 p.m. But we're going to sign off for right now. I'll talk to you soon. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.